I've heard it's, I guess, kind of a running joke that people don't get into stand-up comedy because they're happy people. Um, what would you say is like the biggest misconception about stand-up comedy in your experience? That one, <laughs> that that is the biggest misconception. Okay, they're sad sack clowns that need to get better. You could say that of anything. Have you ever met someone who collects trains? Yeah, my stepdad. <laughs> Your stepdad, right. Yeah. You could say that he gets joy out of those trains, and you could say that when he isn't doing those trains, he's not happy. Hmm, that is, point. it turns out life can be a drag. <laughs> and if you can find something that you love to do, and you, and then you get good at it, because anything you put your attention to, you will get better at. Enter, the entertainment industry lends itself. Like, look at the podcasting, right? You can get so much power from having 500 people or 50,000 people listen to you and go, I listen to your podcast every week and I'm so happy. And you're like, okay. And you could use that power for good or for ill and it could create your entire identity. And when you don't get to do it, you're sad. And with the entertainment industry, as opposed to train collecting, it's more, there's more attention, right? They may build you a statue. They may you know, come and see a live performance of this podcast. Like my favorite murder is, mm. uh, is one of those true crime podcasts with two comics. It's not any, it's not any sadder. It's just more attention. Just a spotlight is, is, is brighter. So you're like, so if someone's sad or if they're, they're evil or if they're happy, like I'm a genuinely pretty happy person day to day. You know, I'm, I, I consider myself the golden retriever of stand-up comedy. And um, it should cheer you up to see my stand-up, to listen to my podcasts. It might bleed off some of your anger to feel like you're not alone.